The Mavic 3 was released with plenty of functionality missings, but the piece are all coming together. After the first big upgrade of last month, a few days ago, DJI released a second major firmware upgrade, and it is a huge one. In this video, I will quickly analyze a series of new functionalities, and at the end, I will spend more time showing my seven new favorite features. Finally, I will show you a couple of things that are still missing or need to be sold. So, let's get going. First of all, we need to download the new version, which is 01000500. We also need to install the new version of DJI Fly App on the mobile device. In the photo menu, there is now an option for burst shooting, with a choice of 3, 5 or 7 photos to be taken in rapid succession. It is a feature very useful for someone who is into sport, action or wildlife photography. The function Return to Home has been modified, responding to some complaints from users. With the previous system, after hitting the Return to Home button, the aircraft would choose the shortest route, avoiding all obstacles with the aid of the obstacle sensors. The same functionality is still available if we choose Advance in RTH in the Safety tab of the settings. But there was some concern about the ability to avoid power cables and fine tree branches. So in the same RTH, it is now possible to choose straight line. In this case, it will work as the previous Mavic models. The aircraft will rise to the value specified in return to home altitude before returning. The flagship model has now the possibility to shoot quick shots. The same as in previous models, Drone, Rocket, Circle, Helix, Boomerang and Asteroid. Let me know in the comment below if you're interested in a quick video, no pun intended, about them. There is a new quick transfer system from the drone to the remote device, smartphone or tablet, for files up to 4K resolution. The RC Pro remote controller of the Mavic 3 is now compatible with the R2S, and this is very good news for owner of both models. There is a new interface for setting resolution, frame rate, and exposure value. We access it by clicking on the icons at the bottom right of the screen. As you can see, we can access all the exposure values from a single window. If we tap on the icon at the bottom left of the window, we access all the settings needed for photos or for videos, according to the mode we are in. It might look like a simple aesthetic change, but it actually makes everything much faster and simpler. We don't have to go back and forth between individual values, or go to the setting to change color mode or photo format. Since these are settings that we need to access constantly, this is a very useful upgrade, even though not the most spectacular. It is now possible to zoom digitally up to a factor of two times outside Explorer mode, in any resolution and in any frame rate or color mode. The quality of the footage is still very good at this zoom level, even in 4K, if we shoot a 5.1 resolution. I've done a review of the master shot function, I will post a link to my playlist with all the videos about the Mavic 3 at the end of this one and in the description below. In this review, I had the feeling that this function had been a bit rushed out and was only half-baked, with some improvement needed. DJI responded very quickly, as now we have all the improvements I asked for. We can use manual exposure, which is crucial, and we can shoot the original footage at a frame rate of 60 frames per second in 4K, very useful to apply some slow motion. Color Display Asset has been added for D-Log, like in the Mavic 2 Pro and the R2S. 
Another update absolutely needed, as the log in the Mavic 3 is extremely flat and the display on my tablet was just a greyish blob. It was extremely difficult to frame and even to expose correctly. The image coming from the telephoto lens has been improved and it does look sharper now, both in video and photos. Another welcome addition, as in my opinion the telephoto lens can be a very useful tool for interesting parallax footage or for shooting subjects that we cannot get close to. I have done an in-depth analysis of the telephoto lens of the Mavic 3, once again please refer to the playlist at the end of this video. Panorama photography was one of the main features some users were waiting for, and I know that many of you are panorama heroes. I will obviously do very soon an in-depth video about panorama mode in the Mavic 3, but for the moment let's have a very quick look. The modes available are sphere, 180 degree, wide angle and vertical, with respectively 25, 21, 12 and 3 photos. A file of the automatically stitched image is saved as JPEG, while the individual photos can be saved either as RAW or JPEG for being assembled with other programs. We can choose the exposure mode between Auto and Manual. It practically works exactly in the same way as in the R2S. So far with the intelligent flight modes of the Mavic 3 grouped under the name Focus Track, we could only use normal mode. I do use them a lot and I ended up shooting most of the time in this mode, considering also that normal in this drone is the excellent Hasselblad natural color system. With this new upgrade we can now use active track, spotlight and point of interest in the log mode and we can also zoom in digitally up to two times. I found this to be extremely useful, especially when tracking action or sport in situations where we cannot be close to the subject. Sadly, this function does not support 5.1 resolution. Well, we can't always get what we want. So after these two firmware updates, the puzzle is coming together and the Mavic 3 is now a sensational drone, but there are still a few improvements needed. HLG is my favorite color mode, both in the R2S and the 2 Pro. DJI had announced that it would be added in January. Let's hope it will come very soon. The telephoto lens has always been the mysterious object, the unfinished business, the missing link. With this update DJI slightly addressed the issue, but we need as soon as possible manual exposure, raw format for photo and other frame rates besides 30 frames per second. The Mavic 3 is still a bit slow to acquire satellite system at launch, something some users have complained about, although it seems to me that it is slightly faster now, not a huge issue for me to be honest. The transmission system is by far the best of the whole Mavic line, with no latency or pixel selection. But for some reason, when testing this new update, I have witnessed a few disconnections, which is quite annoying. Finally, we are still missing waypoints. DJI had announced that this feature will not be implemented in the Mavic 3, which is very surprising, considering that it is the flagship model and waypoints has always been sought after. I must admit that the intelligent flight modes in Focus Track are so good that I don't miss waypoint that much for videography, but it is certainly extremely useful for surveys and automated missions. Click on this link to access my playlist of specific videos about the Mavic 3 if you want to go deeper into any of the aspects of the flagship or the DJI Mavic line. And don't forget to hit the like button if you found this video interesting, it really helps to spread the video around.